Hey, Matt from the A-Team here, and today I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. Today on 4-Minute Film School, we're gonna be shooting an interview on the fly. Let's go. Comment below if this sounds familiar. You get a phone call and you answer it, and it's a client. That client says, hey, can you come up and shoot with us in the next couple of days? Uh, sure, a little short notice, but yeah, I think I can do that. We're gonna be replicating that today at Studio 270. I've never been here before, and we're gonna figure out how to interview in this setup. Let's check it out. The first thing that I wanted to do was take a look around my location, really figure out what angle looks great. In this particular example, I wanted a lot of shallow depth of field within our shot. So the first thing we did was place our camera right here, placed our talent in front of our camera, and then gave him plenty of space between him and our backdrop. Next, we did a little bit of production design. We noticed that there were a few random items from plants to a guitar to whatever curtain thing. What is that? Do you guys know what this is called? Divider? A room divider? So for our production design, we noticed that there were a ton of different plants, a guitar, a room divider that we could utilize, and we decided to use that in our background. We placed them on each side of our talent to add a little bit of some visual interest within the background as well. So now that we have our production design set, we have our camera set and our talent placed, the first thing for lighting that we noticed was there's a ton of sunlight filling in and flooding the room with just ambient fill. We didn't want that. We wanted to control our light, that way we had the nice and prettiest looking image possible. So the first thing we did was block that light using curtains that the studio had provided, but then we also noticed that we're actually missing one of the curtains. So we added our own floppy to block most of that light. But then we modified that floppy just a little bit, that way it's flooding a little bit of light onto the background and not hitting our talent. Moving on to our first light fixture, we have a tube light. I personally really love these tube lights. They're nice and versatile. They can be used as a key light or an edge light, even a fill light, or they could even be used on set in your frame as a practical. But today we're gonna to be using it as our edge light. And the nice thing about this is the shape. Unlike most lights where it's a fixture with maybe like a circular globe or a circle for diffusion, this can fit right above that frame. So you're maximizing the amount of light hitting your talent. Some of these tubes don't actually dim. So when we plugged ours in, it created this extreme bright glow over the entire image. So we brought in our own dimmer and placed it at a pretty low setting, just enough to give him a little bit of an edge light, but not enough to be too distracting as well. We had also set this to a daylight color balance to match the same temperature as our background and then brought it in as close as possible. We could have just used two other fixtures, maybe pointed at his shoulders or the back of his head, but this was a really nice fix to get both his shoulders and the back of his head illuminated while only using one light. Moving on to our second and final light, we have the 300X set to a daylight color temperature along with a giant softbox. With a giant softbox, you are spreading the light evenly across its surface, allowing the light to become softer. And especially when you're in an interview setup, you need that light to be as soft and as pleasant looking as possible. We also made sure to place the light about 20 degrees away from the camera. That way the talent's face isn't too flat and it adds a little bit more dimension as well, adding some nice visual contrast. Whether you're using the same fixture as ours or something completely different, it's important to have a soft light kit within your interview lighting toolkit because really you can light anyone and make them look good. For our last adjustment, we actually used the studio mirror because we noticed there's a little bit of sunlight peeking through through our floppy. So we thought we could direct that light onto our plant in the background to add some nice visual interest. So now, let's take a look. Thanks for watching this episode of 4-Minute Film School. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. The comment question this week is, what is your most rushed project or production you've been on? Let us know in the comments. I want to read some funny stories, and you might just win an Aperture M9. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more tutorials. I've been Matt with the A-Team. Thanks for watching 4-Minute Film School, and happy shooting.